Well, good afternoon to you, and thanks for joining us here at the intersection of faith and culture. This is the Meeting House on Faith Radio, and it is great to have the opportunity to chat with Dr. John Lennox as well as Kevin Sorbo, and I am delighted to have the two of them together. There's a film that the two of them have actually collaborated on. It's called Against the Tide. It's a feature-length documentary on the life, work, and mission of University of Oxford professor, mathematician, and philosopher, Dr. John Lennox. Of course, Kevin Sorbo is a veteran Hollywood actor and director. He has been involved in a number of films and, of course, perhaps best known for his work in the television series Hercules. And so the two of you coming together for this film Against the Tide. And so, Dr. Lennox, let me ask you the first question with respect to how this all came together, a film about your life. I know that's something that that has to be very humbling and honoring. How did it all come together for you? Well, so far as I recall, it came about through Steve Huff of the Pensmore Foundation, who is a physicist and an entrepreneur. And he'd read one of my books and he was very interested in the stand I'd taken against naturalism in the academy. And he came to Oxford and visited me and we became friends. And I got to know him over a period of years. And then at his home, I watched for the first time the film God's Not Dead. And in that film, Kevin Sorbo was playing an atheistic professor. And I must say, I was extremely impressed by his performance in that film. And one thing led to another. The idea came up in Steve Huff's mind of doing a film. It's not something that has been done so often at the level at which we did it. And so that's how it came to be. And Kevin has been absolutely marvelous collaborator. It's just wonderful to work with someone who's not only a good actor, but who understands this stuff and is interested in what it's all about. So it was one of the highlights of my life to do it with you, Kevin. Well, Kevin, I I guess we do need to make it clear for our listeners and viewers today that you are not going to be playing Professor Radisson in this film. This is not something where you and Dr. Lennox are actually going to debate, although I, I think that would be quite interesting. No, <laughs> there'll be no debating here. Um, that, that's how I, I got in, you know, introduced to John is because of being in that role in that movie. And during my series of debates with the college student who I'm tormenting throughout because he's a Christian, um, he does bring up a, a number of quotes uh, from John's debate. So I think that was the really the main reason why I got in there. But being a Christian as well and being somebody I had done other movies like, you know, not like God's Not Dead, but Abel's Field, What If, and Let There Be Light. I think, uh, you know, that that sort of uh, lent some more credibility to, to me being part of this. But really, you know, John is the is, is the star of this movie. I'm on there to narrate, and I'm on there to sort of be led through, um, you know, the moments that we talk about. We spent a number of weeks in Oxford. We spent a couple of weeks down in Israel. So this was an amazing uh, journey for me. And uh, it, it was incredible to hear, uh, you know, to see John's debates against uh, you know people like Dawkins and Hitchens, but also to to hear his uh, replies to the questions that I was fed. Trust me, I didn't I didn't come up with most of these questions. Um, that was done from the producers on the on the side of the show. But it was it was so educational for me, and I think people will find this incredibly educational as well. Well, Dr. Lennox, I want to ask you about what you're perhaps best known for in the Christian community, and that is your well-known debates that you have had with various figures. Kevin was just referring to, say, Hitchens and Dawkins. How is it that you really began to take an interest in challenging some of these different worldviews, such as, as you mentioned earlier, naturalism and matters of science and faith? How did that really come about for you? Well, that started when I was a boy in the sense that my parents were very credible Christians. They lived it. And they also encouraged me to think. They didn't ram Christianity down my throat. And they encouraged me to explore Christianity in depth, but other worldviews as well. And I became convinced very early on that Christianity was true and realized that when I went up to Cambridge that 
if it is true, I've got to be prepared to be counted and stand up. So I started doing this uh, even before I became a student, but very much so during my student days. So I've been doing this kind of thing all of my life. And uh, I little realized, of course, it would lead to very big debates at an international level, including the most famous one in Birmingham, Alabama. Ah, yes. Well, you are listening to Meeting House here on Faith Radio. Dr. John Lennox and Kevin Sorbo joining me today here on the program in advance of the release of Against the Tide, originally scheduled to be in theaters one night only on November the 19th. But it's actually going to be in theaters for three nights because the following night, the 20th, as well as the following Monday, the 23rd, have been added to this release through Fathom Events. And Kevin, you were sharing about the the questions that, as you say, you had been fed. What did you find to be perhaps the most intriguing aspects of the life and the work of Dr. Lennox? Well, you know what you know what I like about John. What's so amazing about him is when you watch the uh, the, inner, the the debates he has. Um, he actually drives his opponents crazy with his kindness, with his <laughs> intellect, with his humor, uh, with his biblical knowledge, um, and and it reminds me of the 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 line that the college student gives to me when he says, "Why are you so angry about something you don't believe in?" And I've always just absolutely loved that part because it just hits me right, right at the core of what John is doing, just to, just to point out logical, truthful answers to people that want to fight the, uh, the existence of God, the existence of Jesus. But even the atheists that he, that he debates, they, they don't deny that Jesus didn't exist. I mean, it's all there, that it's possibly there. But there's one simple thing that I should have thought about at one time when John and I were overlooking this, you know, this, this amazing cemetery in Israel. Um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years old. And he brought up to me the fact that there is no plot there for Jesus because there was not a body to be found. And I find that fascinating and, and interesting because um, this was a very obviously more popular today, but an incredibly popular figure at that time. And to realize that there was a, a resurrection there, um, people scratch their head with that one. And it, it, it was just fascinating to me. And there's one other thing, there was a number of things, but there's another thing that I was stuck in my mind is that I was able to go up and stand at the balcony where Pilate was when he said, which of these two men do you want me to set free and which do you want me to crucify when they all screamed to crucify Jesus? I mean, it was awesome for me. I got goosebumps talking about it now to step out there and do that and be able to stand on the exact same balcony that 2000 years ago, Pilate was standing on. So just, just I mean, I could list on and on and on, but I, I, what I want people to do, not only support this movie, get out there and see this movie, but once it comes out on DVDs, please buy 10 DVDs and send them to your friends because this is an unbelievable way to take the bullet points that John gives, to have ammunition for people to fight and defend their faith, for people that attack them for having a faith. And I think it's just going to be uh, an amazing eye-opener for Christians all around the world. Dr. J uh, John Lennox, tell me just a bit about what you see as the most compelling arguments for the existence of God. Well, it depends entirely who I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking to a colleague and a scientist, I'm going to talk about the created world. And I'm a mathematician. And one of the very compelling arguments is that mathematics works, it describes the universe. And that resonates completely with the claim at the beginning of John's gospel, in the beginning was the word, this is a word-based universe. But other people aren't so interested in science, but the most compelling, of course, for me, is the evidence that comes through the person and work of Jesus, and in particular, the resurrection. And it was very thrilling to be with Kevin in the, the garden tomb, which isn't exactly the place where Jesus was buried, but it's enough like it to give us a real impression. And Kevin's a very modest chap, you know, Bob, because <laughs> he says that he was fed all the questions. He was not. His mind was working 20 to the dozen. And he thought up lots of interesting questions of his own. And that's what made it such a pleasure, because he comes across as a quasi-skeptical inquirer. And so anybody watching the film is going to say, yeah, that's my question. 
And that's why I would, like Kevin, encourage people to go out and get the DVDs. And I'm actually writing at the moment a book, a companion guide to the film that unpacks in more depth some of the big questions that by the nature of things you can never cover completely in a film. So there's going to be that guide as well available, we hope, as soon as possible. Kevin, how can people, people of faith, Christians, respond to scientific discoveries? I, I have stressed the compatibility between science and faith. How do you see that as being something that is tremendously impactful for Christians, especially as they share about evidence relative to the existence of, uh, the existence of God? Well, I think, I think it's, it, it's incredibly important for Christians to have uh, any kind of an apologetic background, any kind of way to fight, uh, you know, in their faith. I did another documentary that uh, is called uh, Exodus Patterns of Evidence, and um, I narrated it. And it's this gentleman, Tim Mahoney, spent 10 years in Egypt proving the Exodus actually happened through archaeological digs. And he ends up proving it because all my atheist friends and agnostic friends are the people that are just attacking me uh, through the Internet. Um, and every time you prove anything in the Bible, because they want to believe the Bible is just a fairy tale, just a myth, but every time you prove something in the Bible, um, it, it will drive them crazy. And hopefully it drives them in a crazy in a positive way instead of a negative way. And they start, maybe it'll open up their eyes and say, okay, maybe there's something more to this. And the number of movies I've done, I've had plenty of people that are non-believers that will email me or come up to me at the airport or hotel lobby, or whatever, and say, you know what? Don't really believe the way you do, but I saw that movie, God's Not Dead, or I saw, you know, Let There Be Light. And yeah, there were some interesting points in there. And there was something that made me kind of go, okay, all right, maybe I can relate to something like that. So um, I'm hoping with this documentary um, that people get, uh, not only will they get answers to a lot of the questions they have, I look at this as, as a travel log as well. This is a, I think people will, will, will hit Oxford because it's like a Kodak moment every time you go around. I didn't realize how many colleges were in that area. They're everywhere. <laughs> and it also happens to be where the Bible was translated back in the 1400s, right, the, into English. And then also to Israel, because the pilgrimage that we saw, John and I saw this, China, Poland, Russia, uh, Mexico, whatever. Um, what I was not prepared for with John were the number of people coming up to me. And it wasn't because of Hercules. It was because of God's not dead and let there be like, what if and soul surfer. And I, it, it finally dawned on me that the medium, the, 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 the television and in movies, how much it does impact people. And, you know, politics is downstream of culture. Who runs the culture? Hollywood does. And we see the movies that they're coming out with in TV shows filled with violence and hate and anger. And we're shocked that there's so much divisiveness in the world. Well, something like this, when against the tide, that's the tide that we're against right now. This is a way to push back that tide. This is a way to fight back and get, get the world back on a moral basis that we really need to get back to because it's pretty scary what's happening in our world right now. We need to have faith again. We need to find our faith again. We need to find hope again and redemption and love. And this documentary has all that in it. Well, you are listening to Beating House here on Faith Radio. Against the Tide, the movie makes its premiere on November the 19th, also in theaters on the 20th and 23rd of this month. And it really features the life and work of noted Christian apologist John Lennox. You might say that he is a Herculean Christian apologist. And so I have not only Dr. Lennox, but also the gentleman who played Hercules in the television series, Kevin Sorbo, as we talk about this film portraying Dr. Lennox and Kevin, of course, the, the narrator, and also, as you might say, someone who has is the interviewer as he engages in conversation, a lot of that conversation taking place. As I understand it, John Lennox, where you are seated even today, joining us. Okay, there was something in our preliminary conversation that struck my uh, imagination and that, that had something to do with the radio. So tell me uh, about that as we revisit this site where so much of this conversation in the film took place. Kevin's referring to uh, quite an old, it's uh, nearly 70 years old now, um, ship's radio that my father bought me because he didn't want a television in the house. So those were the days where very few people had TV. And he was very honest. He said, I cannot uh, give a justification, except I think it'll keep you from your work. 
is there anything else you might be interested in? So I said, a ship's radio. And through that, I became a ham radio operator. And I learned to speak. Well, I practiced my French, so it became pretty fluent. But I learned to, to speak German from scratch because I had a transmitter in my home. And that led to my going behind the Iron Curtain during the time of the Cold War and later to Russia. So it opened up a huge new world of ministry. And for quite a few years, I did far more talks and lectures in German than I did in English. So that's the story. And this radio features in the film. Well, tell me just a bit, and I want to stay with you, Dr. Lennox, before we go to Kevin for the last question. And that has to do with the the fact that the, the two of you travel to various locations. It's been described, in fact, Kevin Sorbo just a few minutes ago saying that this is a, a travel log. You went to a variety of different locations in the filming of this documentary Against the Tide. So tell me why it is that you did that. What does that bring to telling the overall story of your life and work? The film's in two parts. The first part you can roughly say is God and science. And the second part is Christianity and history and rationality. So the first part takes place in my home university, which is one of the leading scientific institutions in the world. And we go from observatories to natural history museums and so on. So the context is ideal for that kind of thing. And then in Israel, of course, is where Christianity uh, took place. And the idea is that you come to a point in the film where Kevin very perceptively says, OK, it's wonderful to talk about God and science, but you happen to be a Christian. Uh, how do you take that extra step? And I admit it is an extra step. So I say to him rather playfully, look, the best way to answer that is to go to where it all began. Why don't we meet for dinner in Galilee? And <laughs> we did. Uh, the only other location that was visited was Cambridge, where I was filmed uh, in the lecture room that C.S. Lewis used to lecture in, because I'm old enough to have heard Lewis uh, personally. And he had a huge influence on my life, which is also woven masterfully by Kevin into the film because we go to the Eagle and Child and he stands outside Maudlin College and tries to pronounce it, whether it's Magdalene, Maudlin or whatever it is. So that really is, is how that developed. Well, Kevin Sorbo, last question here. People know you as an actor, as a Christian you're involved in the entertainment industry. And how does the work of John Lennox, of course, he is teaching, he is a, a Christian apologist. He's someone who believes God's word and is able to defend it vigorously. How do you see that perhaps the work of John Lennox as he teaches the word of God, the work of this film and the worldview that is presented there, how does that relate to what we are seeing in this particular cultural moment, as you see it. Wow. Um, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, you know, with, with I think I kind of answered a little bit of that earlier, because you see what's going on in the world right now. You see the secular movement that's going on, and not only in America, but around the globe. And um, we need more movies like this. Look, I used to get stopped all the time, not only because of Hercules, but because my other series, Andromeda, where I played Captain Dylan Hunt, the first captain after Captain Kirk, people used to stop me all the time for that. I don't get stopped for that anymore. I get stopped 90% of the time now. It's people saying, please keep making more movies that are faith-based, that are family-friendly, that have ma uh, morals, values, love, laughter, you know? Uh, and that, that's really where I'm at right now. We have, my wife and I formed the Sorbo Family Film Studio as well. We got a couple other movies down the pipeline. And uh, I think this, this documentary is just yet another piece of ammunition uh, for uh, in, in positive encouragement for people to go down a better road. If there's any positive thing coming out of COVID right now is the number of pastors who are at least still streaming out there. And a lot of people who are afraid to step into that church because all those Christians are there, they're looking for hope. They're looking for something. Mm -hmm. My church alone now has about 5,000 people online. Well, it's a church that has 400 people in it. 
but it shows mm-hmm. so many people are now looking for something. They're looking for something that isn't this negative world that we're living in right now. They're looking for something that has a positive answer and a, a road that they can get down that long, dark tunnel and see light at the end of that tunnel. And I think, uh, and I know that if people watch this documentary, I think it's going to spread that light further. Well, it has been a delight to have the two of you on the program today. The movie is called Against the Tide, Finding God in an Age of Science. And the movie's website is againstthetide.movie. Again, it premieres November the 19th, the following night as well, the 20th and the 23rd. And any indication when this may be available on DVD? John, did you hear? As far as I know, I think they're going to get it out there right away. I think they're going to do it as fast as they possibly can. Yeah, they'll be streaming on streaming services as well, yeah. That's awesome. John Lennox, Kevin Sorbo, thank you so much for spending some time with us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio. Thank you. Thank you, John. It's good to see you. We got to do Yeah, good to see you, Kevin, and love to Sam and the family.